Okay, let's talk about pointed issue questions. Um, the pointed issue question is sort of a hybrid between the main conclusion question and the inference question. You'll see why in just a second. First, let's just think about it sort of naturally. Um, Esmeralda says, you know what? Nothing is better than preparing for the LSAT. And uh, Winton says, mm, there are things that are better. For example, snow skiing. What is the point at issue between Esmeralda and Winton? Well, whether or not there's anything better than preparing for the LSAT. And what any reasonable sane person would say upon hearing that exchange is that that's the point at issue. The point at issue in that exchange is the same as the point at issue in any exchange. It ought to be in any case. And that is the point at issue is the first person's main conclusion. Esmeralda says that for whatever reason, because uh, Oh, because of the joy it brings to the cockles of her heart that preparing for the LSAT is the best thing. Winton says, no, the point at issue is whether or not the best thing is preparing for the LSAT. In all instances, in all cases, you would expect, and you should correctly expect, that the point at issue between two speakers is that first person's main conclusion. However, on the test, you'll find that approximately one-third of the time when you're asked this question, the point at issue will be that first speaker's main conclusion. The other two-thirds of the time, the point at issue will be some other fact, some other point, some other piece of information within their arguments about which they are committed to disagreeing. So the first third of the time, when the point at issue is, as you would expect, the first person's main conclusion, well, the point at issue question is, at those points, simply a main conclusion question. What is it that Esmeralda concludes? Because that's what they disagree about. And again, the aesthetically pleasing chimes. All right, the other two thirds of the time, when you are asked, what is the point at issue, but none of the answer choices give you an option that identifies Esmeralda's main conclusion, then obviously there's some other piece about which they are committed to disagree. In these cases, we're going to treat the point at issue question a little bit more like an inference question. In these cases, we will know that the point at issue between Esmeralda and Winton is the thing we know, the thing we can prove that Esmeralda believes yes and Winton believes no. And so what I want to do is I want to begin to talk about a method of uh, taking the things that we know each of these two people believe and making it more visual and making it more concrete so that you can do the work that you need to do without spending your time trying to muddle through what it is that they think. And here's my specific attack plan for pointed issue questions. Two kinds of pointed issue questions. The ones that are just main conclusion questions and the ones that are inference questions. So I'm going to adopt a two-pass approach to pointed issue questions. The first pass on every pointed issue question will be to run through those answer choices looking for one answer choice that identifies the main conclusion of the first person. As I said, I expect that about a third of the time I will find one answer choice that identifies one person's main conclusion. And in those cases, my work is done. About two-thirds of the time, however, I'm not going to find an answer choice that encapsulates the first person's main conclusion. In that instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my second prong of attack. So first time, just looking for the main conclusion. If it's there, I'm done. If it's not, this is what I do. I draw a little T-chart just to the left of the answer choices, just like this. Now Esmeralda, remember, argued that preparing for the LSAT is the best thing. Winton said, au contraire, mon petit fromage. It is not the best thing. There are better things. Snow skiing. Um, my little T-chart is going to help me organize my thinking about Esmeralda and Winton. One column for Esmeralda, one column for Winton. Answer choice A says, snow skiing is wonderful to do. Well, what I'm doing in my chart is I'm deciding, can I say with absolute certainty, can I prove that Esmeralda thinks yes and Winton thinks no, or vice versa? A says, snow skiing is wonderful. What does Winton think? Yes, very clearly, Winton thinks snow skiing is wonderful. I can put a yes there. Does Esmeralda think snow skiing is wonderful? I don't know. She doesn't talk about snow skiing. I don't know, and if I don't know, 
This can't be the thing that they disagree about. Answer choice B says studying for the LSAT is arduous. Does Winton believe that studying for the LSAT is arduous? I don't know. He said it wasn't the best thing. He said that snow skiing was better. I don't know how hard he believes it is. Does, does Esmeralda think it's arduous? Again, I don't know. She thinks it's the best thing, but maybe she's a glutton for punishment. Maybe she loves it because it's hard. I don't know. This can't be the thing about which they disagree. Answer choice C says, revenge is a dish best served cold. Okay. What does Esmeralda believe about that? I know nothing about Esmeralda's beliefs on revenge. What does Winton think about that? He doesn't say the first thing about it. This is not what they disagree about. You're going to get one of these gimme, you know, answer choices. Answer choice D says that um, preparing for the LSAT is preferable to having a sharp stick poked in your eye. Esmeralda definitely believes that. Esmeralda definitely believes that the LSAT is better than having a stick in your eye. Winton, on the other hand, I don't know. He did say that, that it's not the best thing, but he didn't rank it in his hierarchy in, in any sense relative to getting poked in the eye with a stick. So for all we know, Winton may also be a glutton for punishment, and he may just enjoy the pain of being poked in the eye. I don't know whether or not Winton would rather be poked in the eye or prepare for the LSAT. Since I don't know, this is not the thing that they disagree about. Answer choice E, however, says snow skiing is preferable to preparing for the LSAT. We very clearly know that Winton does believe that snow skiing is better than preparing for the LSAT. Absolutely. That was, you know, that was part of his evidence. It's not the best thing. There are other things that are better. For example, snow skiing. And and because of the load-bearing language in Esmeralda's argument, we know how Esmeralda feels about this. Because Esmeralda told us that preparing for the LSAT is the best thing, which means that it is better than checkers, it is better than a hearty meal, it is better than a hug from your mother, it is the best thing, which means that it is also better than snow skiing. Answer to his E says snow skiing is better. Esmeralda says no, snow skiing is not better. Clear disagreement from them on this point. This is the thing they disagree about. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking one pass through, looking for some answer choice that clearly enunciates the first person's main conclusion. If I see that, my work is done. If I don't see that, I pull out my little t-chart just to the left of the answer choices and go through them one by one individually, looking for that sharp, clear, up, down, yes, no, person A believes this, person B does not. And that is the approach for the point at issue questions.